Let's take a look at this parabola and we have taken graphs like this and we've compressed them and expanded them horizontally, we've translated them. That really was all of the stuff we did in Unit 1 transformations. Now we're going to add another transformation to the list and the transformation of taking the square root. So we're going to take the square root. And the first thing I want to do is get a sketch of what this graph would look like. It, and I'm not going to do it too accurately, just a shape. So the first thing um, that hopefully you remember, or if you don't remember, you can make a quick table of values, is a graph of a just a straight up square root function. If you make a quick table of values, square if x is 4, y is 2, if x is 1, y is 1, and 0, and 0. And the basic shape of it looks like this. So when we take a square root function, ultimately we're looking for to recognize this kind of shape somewhere on the graph. That kind of helps knowing uh, what we're going to look for. So I'm just going to erase this and we're going to take a look at our graph and now take the square root of that. So what you're going to do is take what the, all the y values and take the square root of them. And if I took the a value of 4 and I took the square root, it would change to a 2. If I took a value of 0 and I took the square root, it would be 0. And another one, if I take the square root of 1, it would be 1. So notice these last two didn't change. These are called invariant points. They didn't change when you did your transformation. So where are these on the graph? Well, they are when y equals 0, so that's right here and right here, x value of 2 in this case and a y value of 0, and when y equals 1, so approximately here and here. If you had graph paper, it would probably be a little bit more accurate. So there's four points. So I have graphed four points on this square root function, and it looks like there it looks like the beginning of the shape is exactly like the parabola. But we cannot take the square root of negative numbers. So square root of negative 2 is not a real answer. So that means that any time the y value is negative, I cannot take the square root. So that basically means all of this part of the graph doesn't exist when I take the square root. So there's only two sections of the graph that will exist, that this little piece and this little piece, the square root of those two pieces. And I've got four points on there already. Now if I go up the graph here and I eyeball where I have a y value of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So that number would change to a y value of 2, which would be dropped down to a y value of 2. And the same thing for this point, it would drop down to a y value of 2. Oh, that's a bit sloppy. Well, I guess the whole graph is a bit sloppy, but it's just a sketch. So I've got six points now, and know, knowing again that I've got a shape that I'm looking for that's like this, hopefully you can see that there's one piece and there's the other. So there's two parts to the square root graph. And I'm going to make this in bright red to highlight. So here's one piece and there's my other piece. So those are my two pieces of the graph together form the sketch of y equals the square root of f of x. Now what are my invariant points? Well, my invariant points are the four original points that didn't move. So it's this point, that point, and these two here. So when y equals 0 and when y equals 1. Now on this graph it's really easy to see when y equals 0. It's when x equals 2 and when x equals negative 2. I didn't really need to do a large calculation, so my invariant points, if I write them in coordinate form, would be that. Then I have a second set for y, y equals 1, which I've roughly sketched in here, but I want to know what the x coordinate is exactly. So I need to do a little bit of algebra for that, and I'm going to do that by plugging in y equals 1 
So I have f of x equals 1 half x squared minus 2. This is a fancy way of saying y, so my y value is 1. So now I'm going to get x all by itself, and that means I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I get 3 equals 1 half x squared. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So it's 6 equals x squared, and then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Sorry, I'm just going to give you a little bit more room, and I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 6. So my other set of invariant points are the square root of 6, 1, and negative square root of 6, 1. So I've got four invariant points on this graph. The next question is, what is the domain and the range of, I should have been cl clear here, of the square root function? So notice that's the domain and the range of the red graph. So there are, it's two sections, that means I have to write the domain in two pieces. When the domain is when x is greater than or equal to 2, and when x is less than or equal to negative 2. Writing them as two pieces because I've got two separate parts of the graph. The range is when y is greater than or equal to 0 because we're only looking at y values that are bigger than 0. Hope that helps clarify some of the graphing of those radical functions.